Hey everybody, Brad Ellis here. I'm joined by Daniel Bloodworth. Hello. Ben Moore. What up? And the hero of time himself, Michael Damiani. Achievements. This year is a special year in video games. It's been the 35th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda series. Came out in, uh, I believe, February 21st, 1986 in Japan. And we thought, hey, what better way to celebrate this beautiful game? To hop right back in and discuss it. So we got Dom in the pilot seat right now. The sword on the title screen reminds me of like those little sandwich swords, you know? That's the first time I've I've ever thought about that. I don't think I'll ever be able to forget that. That's oh, amazing. Yeah. amazing. I love that yeah. like without the manual, like that's it. There's your story. Yeah. And also that they show you all the items right here. Clock. This is well, seems like a more than you or more you get than a lot of games though at that time, this, especially oh, games for sure. like this. This feels like arcade style. Arcade games used to like show you like the power ups, like Pac Man. They would like mm -hmm. show you what each like ghost was worth, what everything did. I feel like that might have been like a relic from that time period. Mm hmm. I did like this also because I remember when I was playing this when I was very young. I knew there's items in the game that I haven't found yet, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh man, where is this? book of magic like where do i find this thing what is this yeah so i've got this bad boy here the nes Ooh. game atlas Ooh. This, this is my way through through zelda and it's got all kinds of stuff in here must be nice but, that is uh, really cool dude wow this this was like my my entry point into a lot of zelda stuff and it like a lot of like castlevania 2 like i would not have beaten these games without this oh, stuff. Right. oh my god so yeah amazing the, so essential so cool. the map the map is so essential <laughs> the well it's 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 not gonna show up on camera, but it's like you can see like different color variations and things that don't line up because it is literally like a bunch of photos posted pasted together. You oh, know? that's great! <laughs> I loved how this game came with like a partial map. It had like a sealed booklet that mm -hmm. said like tips in it, and like you had to like break a seal to open it. They're like only use this if you're really lost. And then like it, this was like one of the first games I had. A standalone strategy guide, the tips and tricks booklet oh. that you had to buy separately that is kind of harder to find now that basically showed you how to do everything. But yeah, this game, I think they thought this game was uh, originally going to be too hard for people. Sure. They were worried about it. Yeah. No. Uh, I was Here we go. just dipping in on the, on the Switch version just to refresh my memory on this game. And I was immediately I was like, okay, wait, what? Where is this thing? Like, it's just <laughs> yeah, sure. it's just such a different headspace. It just from so many modern yeah, games. Yeah, this game just dumps you in. It's yeah, just like good luck. Was Zelda one the first Zelda game for all of you? Yeah, or? it was. For oh me. no 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 no, mine was not really. Um, Link's Awakening on oh, nice. Game Boy, not DX a even. Good pick. Oh, good nice. Link's Awakening. Yeah, I mean, the thing with me, with, with Zelda in particular, and like a lot of early NES stuff, is I didn't get an NES of my own until quite a bit later, like until after the Super Nintendo came out. Yeah, same. Oh. So a lot of things that I played was just like at sleepovers, at yep. friends' houses. Mm -hmm. yep. And so, like like you're saying, like Zelda is such a weird thing in the way it dumps you in and, and like trying to figure out how it works that it did not grab me. <laughs> <laughs> oh sure at, yeah at Whoa. first you know it was just like uh what what's happening it's like if you handed somebody if somebody came over and you handed them like assassin's creed valhalla now and you're just like uh let's play multiplayer together yeah. <laughs> <laughs> growing up i had a game boy and i played a lot of stuff on there but i was a genesis kid like that was that was the console that i had and i would play nes and, and snes over at friends houses but i didn't get i don't think i got an nes until like high school Wow. Um, oh, okay. And the, the first time I like I actually sat down and played through Zelda One was the 3DS. I played it on 3DS. Oh, um, nice! I was yeah. actually at GT uh, at that time. And oh, wow, wow, wow! I but... it's, I wonder I wonder if I would have bounced off of it had I played it when I was younger. Like it's just an interesting thing for me to think about. Sure. I, I think it you know at that point when I played when I sat down and played through it it was like well I have save states so you have that which is nice. <laughs> And you have the yeah. internet, but also, I don't know, I just think I was more patient at that point. Sure. Absolutely. Um, when I played this game the first time, I was very young, like two or three. And at the time, I remember I was playing like Mario Brothers. I was lucky enough to get it. My grandma bought me my brother an NES. And I remember playing Mario Brothers, and I played this game. 
And I remember playing this game and feeling this insane sense of adventure of just being dumped in this world and exploring and not knowing what's going on and discovering things. Like, I remember someone told me about like bombing a wall or something to find a secret passage and how awesome I thought that was. There's just all these little secrets. And I'm wondering, especially because I think Diamond, you played it earlier too. What was it like when you played this the first time? This game was so confusing as a kid. Yeah. In fact, like I think I was able to find the first level, maybe the second level and third right. level, but I couldn't beat this game as a kid. Uh, a friend of mine who actually introduced me to NES, his older brother, who was probably like several years older than us, was actually the one who one day was like came to both of us we were playing and said, "Hey." Oops, didn't mean to do that. Do you want me to beat the game for you? And we're like, what? And he just like straight up like beats the game for us. And like, we went to bed and like the next day we woke up, he's like, here you go. And handed it back and it was like completed. And we're like, whoa, what wow, the hell? That's so funny. I don't know if anybody else had a problem with it, but I thought Ganon was really, really hard in this game. Oh, sure. Yeah. Especially, like, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, But it's, it's interesting because when I was just, you know, revisiting it, yesterday to refresh my memory like it's such an impressive game and it's it's so, it's so weird to say that because like everybody knows that mm -hmm. Zelda's impressive but there's there's this simplicity to it and there's like so many little things that I like like the full health getting the blast like it's so powerful and so useful and so it it like makes you tense up and you have to like play different Mm -hmm. when you have full health versus when you don't and it's just right. like for a game that you know that has a, has a has a d-pad and a b and an a button essentially you know like i i feel like they there's so much nuance into how you approach this large open world yeah it's it's like the game's <laughs> version of a power-up pretty much yeah. you know there's like the clock you can get but you know it's like it's almost like the star in mario you got that thing you feel you feel it good but zelda you definitely have to be cautious because you don't want to lose it it's like a glass yeah. cannon almost. Yeah. Well, then, you know, the boomerang becomes so essential because, oh, yes. mm -hmm. you know, again, like, part of the, the trick with, like, hitting enemies is that, like, you don't have a lot of range. Yep. So, like, you try to get in there and attack enemies and, like, you're kind of slow in comparison to them and all of that. So it's like you can hit them, but then you take damage at the same time. And so it takes a while to, like, figure out, like, just the, the rhythm of combat. Always got a similar vibe to, like, Pac-Man. Like the maze, mm. like each screen is like, you have a way to fight back, but at the same time, a lot of times you're just running away from enemies and like trying to weave through these narrow passages without getting hit. And mm -hmm. it's, as you're right, it's like very intense. And you made such a good point, Ben, about when you have full health versus not full health, how it changes the dynamic. Or when you get yeah. like a stopwatch, a clock like that, and enemies freeze, and it's like, oh yes, it's so good. Mm -hmm. I can just yeah. like survive now. Well, it, what was interesting that I had forgotten about is that, um, you know, they don't have all of these inventory systems, right? So mm -hmm. when you buy the arrows, like that's a permanent thing that you buy, but then you need to use rupees, uh, rupees you know, as your ammunition, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, here's one of these secrets, man. I remember finding about this when I was a kid. Just like insane. Like I never played anything like this at the time. When you guys beat this game the first time, what you used to beat it? Cause like when I was a kid, I didn't beat this game till later in my life. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up, you know, I didn't have a Nintendo Power or anything like that. I remember a neighbor I was with, we called the Nintendo Power hotline <laughs> oh, yeah. and asked questions like yeah, about dude. where nice. the red ring was and stuff like that for like the red tunic, all that stuff. So what tools did you guys use to get through this game or did you just kind of figure it out? Um, that's a great question, Brad. I honestly don't remember everything. Because I was playing the 3DS version, which had save states. I definitely used them, but I don't specifically remember how heavily I used them. Mm hmm Because, like I said, I, like, I, there's certain parts I remember struggling with, like the Ganon fight. So I don't don't fully remember. I did definitely look at, like, maps and things online, though. Cause, sure, yeah. Like, And even when I was revisiting it yesterday, right, it was like, oh, God, like, what do I do? Like, I, it, it, mm -hmm. it can be, it's, it's a very obtuse game. Which is part of the fun, I think, but you can definitely sure, feel yeah. lost. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's crazy when you just like you're just wandering around like this, and like suddenly like 
oh, I'm I'm in level seven, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, where's level two? I yeah. don't know. And just and then just what Damiani the did right there. Yeah. Like, yeah. What the heck? yeah. Exactly. I think this is a perfect example of talking about that. Yeah, because it's like, how are you ever supposed to figure out how to bomb walls? Because later on in A Link to the Past, they added like you could push your sword, like hold the charge sword yeah, or thing, tap. and tap on a wall, and it make a yep. different noise, which is way more Dude. intuitive than just wait, mm -hmm. what? Just well, the yesterday. One thing here, like I always look for these like little flat edges, you know, like you know, and just and just try it. Yeah. But but like with the flames, man, like figuring out which bush to to burn and all of that, especially when you have the blue one that like you can only do once per screen. It's strange because I like I don't actually have the memory of like okay when did I first beat this when did I actually go back and sure yeah, yeah sure. do this for real, um, but I'm sure that like I borrowed it from a friend or rented it or, or something like that mm -hmm. in like 1991 ish era. At that age, I felt like I was playing a lot of games with friends too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you would like go through these games with friends, and you could help help with them their knowledge and stuff. So definitely help getting through it. But it, <laughs> yeah, still. okay. Yeah, with Dragon Warrior especially, like, yeah, I was just, like, with a friend, like, I, you know, every weekend, you know, mm -hmm. and Going we just through it. went through that game together. Things could kill you so fast in this game when you came across mm -hmm. new things, like innocuous things. Uh, the things called Pole's Voice, which look like just rat heads. Oh, slow down, please. Mm -hmm. uh, I always like, thought they looked like so rabbits. much damage to you. Yeah, like mouse heads, rat heads. What it... I mean, First I just had that experience. Yeah. Ye yesterday, where the, the it was like the blue boomerang guys. <laughs> the uh, is, yeah. yeah, 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 and they were they were throwing boomerangs. And it was the, it's in the room in the second dungeon where there's like cannons in the four corners. I just went in there and got obliterated. <laughs> and I was like, no, like I don't even know if I have to do this, but I'm clearing this room. It, and it took me cool. it took me a few took me a few attempts, but then I got the magic boomerang, which I totally like did not remember at all and I was like that feels really cool that like mm -hmm. I just wanted to do this super hard thing that I I don't think I have to do and I got this sick reward from it and yeah. well it's also so funny too that like a that's sort of optional right you could easily get yep. to that dungeon and not pick that up yeah and b that like you get the upgraded oh, boomerang really? the next dungeon after the first boomerang <laughs> 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 I think that that is something that I had with Zelda 1 and 2 when I played them, and then I also had with Breath of the Wild, uh, is just that, that feeling of discovery and surprise, which I, I think is so special. Yeah, well, there's definitely a, a period where, like, uh, I don't I don't like when people call it a formula, but yeah, like, there's, each dungeon has the item, and then the item is the key to completing the dungeon yep. or fighting the boss or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas, like, that is very not true in this. Yeah. Know, it's like, yeah. Um, like, the, yeah, with the second boss, he fought with, you know, the Dodongos was the, the bombs. And, like, you just get the bombs randomly. You just, right. Like, mm -hmm. Kill enemies and get bombs. It is cool, though, that if you go off to the, the room in the side, there's the old man that's like, hey, the Dodongo just, like, smoke. Yeah. 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 Isn't there some translation error, like, snafus going on there, Damiani? Like, yeah. There are definitely clear. points, yeah. There's like thing people th things people didn't understand things that were like actually completely wrong. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh. <laughs> I think a lot of people were confused by like the hints, like Eastmost Peninsula has the secret or secrets where fairies do yes! or don't live and stuff mm -hmm. like that. People are like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it didn't make any sense to like as a kid. You're just like, I don't even." Like, what is this? And it's funny because all of them really do, the original Japanese stuff is like very clear or clearly mm -hmm. meant to convey something that helps you solve the game. And it's probably most likely because you could express more in shorter amount of characters in Japanese. So right. the localization team not only had to like worry about localizing, but the limits of this game mm -hmm. and how much text could be displayed was another problem. Yeah, is it like the Pose Voice one or something like that? Because the family oh, calls voice in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's the craziest thing. one. Though they did bring back the way to actually kill that, though, in in uh, in the DS Zelda games, they they brought it back, which was nice. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, there's there's that 
thing you find there's like I think it's an old man and he's like show this thing to the to an old to the old yes. woman yeah the and you're like wait a minute letter. like which old woman they like yeah. they all look the same <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah the prescription I think is what we called it uh, it's like the yeah the prescription for medicine the, the medicine of life yeah it's like yep. uh... I really like how the the punishment for death in this game is like pretty soft. Where it's just like, yep, you just go back to like that right. starting position or like the beginning of the dungeon. You don't lose any rupees or anything. Like it, 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 j it feels like the appropriate amount of punishment without like, I don't know, totally demolishing your will to play. Right. I think this game's hard enough to get through on its own, especially if you don't yeah. know what you're doing. Oh yeah. So if it like, <laughs> if you like lost progress or money or something. I feel like this was definitely another boss's truth with a Damiani. It's just like, it's crushing it. Yeah. It's so, it's so hard watching Gryon, Damiani play yeah. this. Cause like, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be close to this far. If, if this well, was the way for like 30 minutes. So like you want to come into that fight with like full health. So you can like stay far away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then like the head starts chasing you and stuff. And then you get like multiple fireballs, and like when they get the ones with more heads later on, it gets ridiculous. It's just like, hey. feels like a war of attrition at some points. So you're like, oh no, please, just let me live and win. Right. Uh, what's well, it's interesting because like even the uh, even the player's guide here like makes a note of you know just like how significant it was for Nintendo for this to be like the first game with a, the ability to save. Mm. Oh you know, sure. And the ability to like actually pick up where you left off when you turn the NES back on. You know, and like for me, like because I, you know, I was lucky enough to have like a Commodore 64 there for a couple of years. Like, that wasn't necessarily my experience with Zelda. I had played a couple of like other adventure games and RPGs and stuff. But it's, like, it's still it it is kind of like a a big difference from you know going for more arcade style games or like level select codes and all mm -hmm. of that. It's very interesting to hear about how some of you played this digitally for your first time. Because for me, this game. The physical version of this game is so ingrained in my memory because of the gold mm -hmm. cartridge. Yeah. It's like such a big yeah. deal. And now, yep. like thinking about, there actually will be generations of people who have no like other than like looking at the box art logo, they just don't know what the heck, like what gold cartridge, what you know. That yep. it's so weird to me, but also very intriguing. Yeah, you're gonna grab it. I mean that you had that with Ocarina of Time as well. Um, and Thank Damiani, you. it's such a good point because. That is that is something that I think I think I've always admired about Zelda. Like even as a very young kid, getting my copy of Link's Awakening, there was just like this classiness to the box art. Oh my god! Where it was just yeah. the, just the the logo and the owl, and it was just it was just so clean. And I you know Zelda. the the original Zelda NES uh, box art as well. It, it just has like kind of this like elegance to it. It's like it it like makes you think before you even put the game into your machine that like this is special or like yep. mythical even it's a legend it's actually a legend you know yeah man it's something i really appreciated with those when they kept doing that through games uh i don't think they really still do it for a lot of them but like i remember like wind waker even having like gold and a lot of the stuff mm. and of course all the all the cartridges have been pretty much gold except game boy ones but you're right ben that gold that gold touch definitely makes it feel special Almost like an event. Even people talk about, you know, losing manuals. Yeah. yeah. And oh, how yeah. a lot of people that probably doesn't even seem like anything to even cry about. Mm -hmm. But it's like, man, back in the day, manuals were super awesome and had a lot going on. Yeah, the, yeah. the art that was in this manual in particular, you know. Yeah. Like, it, it, you know, as we saw again at the beginning, like, the, the story in the game is, like, two sentences of text. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's like the manual is like what really like lets you see Flesh the character yeah, yeah. and that the world. That artwork and... in there too, man. Yeah. yeah. That was like very integral to like that. And as you said, Blood, I was like you, which is kind of funny to hear someone else have that. The cartoon painted my kind of like imagination for how I viewed the world of this game. It, 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 like, it filled in gaps that weren't being filled in by, you know, the lack of storytelling mm -hmm. in this game. So seeing those artworks and those manuals, it was just like, wow, this is how the world's supposed to look. This is so beautiful. And it's like, mm. <laughs> looking at these 8-bit sprites now, it's like, that's a lot of imagination at work, but also so cool. Plus, I just mm -hmm. love the, arts, the artwork style of the, uh, 
these games. I, I yeah. would yeah. love to see the artwork come to life in like a modern game that looked like that. I feel like these games, like they're more intimidating at first than once you know how to play them. So like a lot, it's mm -hmm. like a lot of old NES games. Is that once you learn the tricks, they really aren't that bad. Though I will say, I think the execution requirement of some older games is a little bit higher. But I mean. Yeah. Also, this was a game I did get pretty early, and as I said, I was I was had no idea how to play this game. In fact, more, Zelda 2, I didn't beat this game on my own because I said I gave it to a friend's older brother to beat this. I don't remember when I first beat this game. It was probably a few years later. Same thing with Zelda 2. It was like an accomplishment as a kid to get to like even the second dungeon mm -hmm. and just finding it. And it's like, wait, there's mm -hmm. like six total and a final? Yeah. I have no idea. I remember I had to like go. I had to wait for the internet. I had to wait for maps. I printed out maps because I didn't have access to this. Uh, I never got that uh, atlas like Bloodworth did, and I just printed out maps. And I was like just looking. I was like, oh, I gotta go this way. I gotta go this way. And even then, it was still like hard. Like Zelda Two is ridiculous, and this game I think is pretty hard too for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, it's funny because you know. Uh... You always complain about hit detection, and like this is a game where it like really is a thing where it's like, didn't I hit that thing? You just like just barely to the left or right of an sure, enemy. Sure, yeah. It was like, okay, this is this is hit detection origins right here for Damiani. <laughs> hit detection origins. This is like a I got I, okay. Pipe. I, I kind of like that. It's kind of funny. Oh wait, I want to. Uh, you gotta get that ring, dude. The That's what I'm, I meant to go do that. I'm gonna go do that now. I meant to go to this one. Sorry. Or you got enough now. You gotta see all those tunics. Sorry, it's, uh, I remember when you, you get that ring and just your tunic change color was like crazy to me. I never I didn't even like know about that. And then I found out later it reduced your damage too. Well, yeah, that's a funny thing as well. That like without you know, if, again, like if you if you borrowed the game or you get it from a garage sale or something, that's without that manual, it's just like what yeah. what did I just pick up? What yeah. does this do? Yeah. Did you like? I, I left out. So one thing I do like about this game, and I, I understand why people call old school NES games, especially like Zelda One, maybe Zelda Two, kind of the inspiration for the difficulty style of Dark Souls in terms of like traps, secrets like that. Because mm -hmm. oh, sure. while this game has plenty of secrets, and as Ben was saying, like I was bombing every wall, or you're burning every bush. This game does technically penalize you in some regards at points. If you burn down a wrong bush, there might be an angry tenant inside, a resident who's like, yo, pay me mm -hmm. for that door repair, and takes away your rupees. And it's like, wait a second, what? So now you got to be like, careful. It's like, do I actually, yeah. do I go in here now? Like, as you look at your stats and stuff, <laughs> it's like, you got to start weighing your options yeah. at some points. Um, yeah, it's it's so funny because in this is an era, you know, known for cheap difficulty and just the way that this game is designed I, I like not that there isn't anything cheap i guess but there's so much like that kind of helps it like even the the things that like pop out of the ground there that you can't see right away that like come out from the sand i don't remember what they're right. called Leavers. um and like they they hit you but it's they hit you and they'll do a little bit of damage, but it's like, okay, like, now I know that that can happen. Now I'm mm -hmm. trained to be on the lookout for that so I can handle it better, and I still have, you know, probably some life to spare for next time. Whereas, like, I think about, like, Ghosts and Goblins, and it's like, yeah, I don't know what's gonna come, and I'm probably just gonna die <laughs> figuring it out. <laughs> like, sure. it's, just, it's, right. it's just a totally different style. <laughs> yeah, mentality, man, you're like, yeah. oh, well... Well, Death I think the coming. other thing, too, is, you know, if you clear a screen of enemies, like, you can't just go off the screen and come back, like, in a lot of NES games. Like, they'll yeah. stay clear for a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a nice reward. They do they do come back. I don't know if there's... Damiani would probably know this. I don't know if there's, like, a hard rule for when they respawn, but... They it's come like a certain back. number like, of screens I think it's away. like yeah. you get come back twice, maybe. You get, like, two chances to come back. Uh, oh, okay. If you die, they definitely respawn, and I know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you use the the second controller to do the soft reset, um, like in a dungeon or whatever, like to warp back to the beginning of a dungeon, that will also usually reset it, mm -hmm. I believe. And controller two tricks. Man. Well, I, I kind of like what they did with that, because Ben was saying again earlier about like the value of having full hearts. 
-hmm. people are like, oh, that's a cool trick. I could just like warp back to the beginning of a dungeon. Like if I do it right now, like I'm in the far corner, but the cost of it is your hearts go back to three. So you do right. lose, there's a cost to it. I don't know if that was ever mm -hmm. planned into it, but it's like, it ended up being really nice that they did, yeah. it, it mm -hmm. worked that way. Dude. I love how clearly you could see the keys in them. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> just like but this, that's, a, that's another funny thing is it's like keys, like in later Zelda games, like there would be the exact number of keys that you would need in a dungeon. For a dungeon, yeah. And this is like, you don't need that key. Yeah, you, you don't wanna, need to use all of them. If you want to skip that room or skip that door or yeah, go, even... go through that room a different way, then yeah, you could buy that keys key for later. too. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, sure. you needed to because you could technically get into a situation where you or, yeah. might be you, you might not know how to get a key. But also, in the second quest, there are there there's straight in this game basically there are straight up rooms that are do, like doom rooms. There's a way to get stuck in them, and there is no way to get out. Unless you do do the second controller thing or just hit reset on your system. Which is kind of funny Damn. that they would even go like to that length. I don't know if that was intentional, yeah. but it's still kind of funny to see that happen. It's like this, you don't have any keys, it's a two, like the room closed in on you and it's like you need a key oh, to get yeah. out. There's no more keys, you're like, you're too you, bad. you can't warp out? Yeah, too bad, you're done. Uh, <laughs> Brutal. Man, another thing that I, I just absolutely love and think is so smart Oops. is how they make just information so rewarding and I think like a perfect example of that is the dungeons and getting the map and getting the compass and how mm -hmm. like when you first enter a dungeon it's even more intimidating because you don't know it's laid out and then as you go through it as you kind of conquer it you get more information you get more comfortable with mm -hmm. it it starts to make more sense but that initial feeling that first time you go into a dungeon you're like I, mm, I just don't know like I just yeah. don't know what's guess ahead. I'm going this way yeah yeah, yeah. This music right here <laughs> is definitely reused yep. several times. The, the oh, recorder yeah. music. Hear it in Super Mario Bros. 3, and then it's in the Ocarina of Time title screen. Which was really nice. See, this dungeon in particular, it's like, how, how do you... How do you know to do that there? <laughs> I think you need somebody like, told you, you about get it. A That's map. basically yeah. what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. It's either someone told you, or you get a map and you try and go in directions. And I think once you find out, you can bomb walls. It's like if you see something you can't reach, bomb, you bomb just, that wall yeah. and try. Yeah. It. And if it's and then like early on, the game does teach you kill every enemy in a room, and you can push a block and you can open. And so maybe mm -hmm. you do that. So I think it came down to trying killing every enemy. Pushing blocks, bombing every wall, and that's how it just went for everyone. <laughs> yeah, you just better hope you don't run out of bombs. Yeah, and that's the thing. But like, they kept selling them for outside the in the vendor places. Dungeon, so yeah. it's like, okay, this one was like a weird one. This thing right here, the bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> that, well, I had to be told what bait, to do like here. What? I did not understand that. <laughs> was um, was Zelda the first NES game with? With the ability Battery? to save? Yeah. It, well, through like a, a, a battery. Before that, okay. it was just passwords. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Those old well, Mega Man it's, passwords, well, man. It's interesting oh because... My God. I'll do this normally <laughs> here. Uh, Miyamoto said they envisioned people like taking out graph paper, drawing the maps for these levels. Yep. And then sharing them with friends. This was meant to be like, before the internet, this was supposed to be a communal game. Where you talked with people to figure out what to do, and they did yeah. say that it was at the GDC panel that that was intentional, that they they mm -hmm. hope people would do that, and yeah, that's what everyone did as a kid was just like talked about how oh how do I do this how do I do that and it's like oh uh, but I did this did you know about this trick in this game it's like yo what and like cheat codes like people knowing cheat codes were like like the kings in like school <laughs> for video game mm -hmm. stuff it's like. Wait, where'd you learn that? And it's like now you know they like had a magazine. They had access to a magazine or something. And it's like right. kind of like almost like the arcade scene with fighting games. Like the stories we hear about, like Street Fighter Two, people figuring out all the shit about Street Fighter Two back in the day. How like awesome that must have been to like not know anything mm -hmm. and have to like talk with everything. But also the speed of how everything's solved now because the entire world can work on it. I was gonna say that's a thing right. that's yeah. lost a lot. And if it does get to that, it's like. A couple days usually, or an hour, a couple hours until people figure Unless it out. Unless it's Fez. Unless it's Fez. That's right. <laughs> Wait, we're on level eight already? Oh my yeah. god. It, this, I, it's I, like I'm upset. <laughs> I, <laughs> 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 oh. Okay, cool. 
Because, yeah, I'm sure, like, both of us probably played... Put more time into this game last night, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I, I've, I've definitely put more time into, like, the first two dungeons <laughs> than Dabi has, Dabi Ani has, like, the, the whole eight. Oh, that's funny. And, like... I think I'm okay at games, like, most of the time. Sure. But this is, like, this is next-level shit, man. I was thinking about it. I don't know what you're going to call these videos, but, like, this might as well just be boomer talk, you know? Like Boomer talk. <laughs> yeah. boomer talk. <laughs> I feel like that's a lot of our stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. <laughs> We're a long way from that, but, yeah. But, yeah, like, this dude, like, first time getting this dude, like, it was, like, a struggle. And it's like an earlier version of the boss now has like four heads and you're just like, mm -hmm. please, what the hell is this? I think mm -hmm. I died to this thing like at least 30 times. And it's like... But you're saying that like, and doing it like almost flawlessly. But it's, it's like... But it's like Kid. Yeah, everyone's... Yeah, yeah, you have yeah, like yeah. some like You have like the best weapon in the game right now too. And yeah. it's like so many people are at these points with like yeah. maybe the wood sword mm -hmm. still and stuff. Exactly. Well... And all these hearts, and th like that's yeah. another thing to keep in mind is yeah. like when you save and quit, you come back with three hearts, and you got to try to like build that back up. Yeah, it's oh, like that man. dude will wreck you, and like even if, if if you have like no defense, it's like what, make what four as few as four hits or something will like wreck you, and you're done. It, it's cool how the, the Lance of the Dungeons have different. You know, they, they're different pictures, basically. Pictures, I yeah. love how the last was yes. like, okay, what if it's a skull? <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> it was just something, like, so pure about that mindset. Mm -hmm. Pure. <laughs> it's just, like, the perfect representation of evil. Yeah. It's like, what would a bad guy oh, have? Skull. Skull. Is, well, it's, it's also skull, interesting, it's like, the second quest, because you were talking about how you enter your name is Zelda, and that unlocks the second quest. The first five levels of Zelda, their maps spell out Zelda. So it's mm. kind of yeah. like, I don't know if that's them trying to draw like that's the hint for how you use the cheat code to get to the second mm -hmm. quest love this dude just yeah like, so it go to the next room and if yeah, you have bombs be gone. Good. Oh, oh by the way you can aggro them i love that yeah <laughs> yeah what's funny is this this one for uh, i can just pull up because it's like coming out anyways uh so this one for seven is like that shape and it says demon i'm like oh if you say so <laughs> demon. <laughs> demon. okay <laughs> i guess it looks kind of like a mouth uh, the music of this game, I'm kind of curious, uh, obviously mm. it's very iconic, are all of you aware of the, the story about the, the theme song for this game? That no. they used a famous song called Bolero, but they couldn't get the copyright clearance to it, like it hadn't fallen into public domain. So apparently the theme song is The Legend of Zelda is composed in like, what, a week or something? By mm -hmm. Koji Kondo. He did come up with mm. it in a week. A week? Yeah. Damn. Something like that. That guy did something... That guy, like, did more to impact the world in a week than I have in my entire life. Like, that's, that's right. amazing. Honestly, probably, like, what will, will be our entire life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Just, like, that. Well, that was one of the things I was, I was thinking, like, when they had that, that video of uh, Miyamoto touring Super Nintendo World. Mm -hmm. Like, how crazy is that? Like yeah. some stuff that you drew on some graph paper is like has now used with park. <laughs> people walking around. Yeah, that's like some Walt Disney shit. <laughs> yeah, I remember reading a story about a, a person who ended up working at Nintendo, but they were like showing off a project, the student project of theirs, the Miyamoto, and it was like a vampire game. And they were explaining how uh, you push down the, the A B button on the NES controller to suck the blood out is the mechanic. And Miyamoto's criticism was like, well, why don't you make it when you're letting go of the controller is when they suck the blood because that's like, that's like, that like matches like the play, what the player would be expecting. Like it's extracting motion, whereas mm -hmm. pushing is like the puncture part of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> this is what he thinks about. I was like, geez, yeah. Yeah. holy crap. And like the student that's was like, oh my gosh, Hebrew. you're right. It's like, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> It's such a rad story. It's like I kind of wanted to see that in action. You know, does, what, I was like, was that Kojima? No, it wasn't Kojima. <laughs> like, uh, Miyamoto, <laughs> like that, that's what created Kojima. It was Miyamoto telling him about yeah, pressing, letting go of the buttons. About working with Miyamoto and like getting advice from, I immediately thought of like, what would it be like to work with Kojima? And how insane that would be. Well, I just think about like. <laughs> I think about Death Stranding, right, and him going around to 
like all of these actors and all these people and like explaining the game to them Mm-hmm. And like, what 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 is I, w- I want to see their first responses to <laughs> yeah. his description. All right, it's GG right now. In the head, he's dead. That was Dude, so I good. I love the the blood. Yeah, game still. It's so yeah, good. there's something about these early NES games that were really so unafraid of gore. Yeah, like Bionic Commando, right? And you like. Mm-hmm fighting essentially Hitler and his head explodes Exploding. Yeah. in all these chunks. So for me, this I didn't know you could hit these as a kid, so I like did this. <laughs> you cheese through it? That's so funny. <laughs> that was how I learned I about framed. cheese. <laughs> Actually, no, I thought that was the intended way. I was like, dude, that's insane. You gotta have more health to get past this part. That was a, a wonderful way, Dame, to celebrate I would say the 35th anniversary. I had a ple- it was a pleasure to watch you go through this game, man. Thanks for watching, everybody. We really appreciate it. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, remember to check us out on patreon.com slash easy allies if you like what you do. It's how we're supported through all of this. Um, I don't know. Maybe if people like it, maybe we'll do something like this feature. I have no idea. But I just thought, and Dominic thought this should be a fun little thing to go through the game and celebrate with everybody. Uh, thank you, panelists, for, I guess, not even panelists. Thank you, friends, for hanging out and talking <laughs> Zelda. It was a pleasure. Yeah, it was a pleasure. For sure. Okay, till next time, everybody. So long.